Shane Dawson has spent the last 15 years crafting the perfect character and mask to convince his YouTube audience that he's just a kind-hearted, empathetic figure out in the world helping people. In reality, Dawson cares only about himself, money, and attention. In fact, Shane Dawson cares so little about others that he is now platforming an alleged predator and groomer. While Dawson has been on YouTube, he's used his perfectly curated character and mask, but his mask has slipped plenty of times over the last decade and a half. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today, along with when he went full mask off in June, 2020. As a victim of abuse myself. Oh my God. We are also going to be exploring Dawson's return to YouTube and how, just like his other scores of controversies, that it's clear that he hasn't learned anything at all. Shane Dawson was born in Long Beach, California as Shane Yaw and grew up with his two older brothers. The majority of the time, Shane's mom was a single parent and Shane had a rough childhood where he suffered abuse. Shane has also spoken out about his own abusive behavior towards other children when he himself was a child. I would molest kids on my street. <laughs> um, and that's another thing that they say that kids who are abused, sexually abused, do. Like, I would, like, make kids on my street, like, take their pants off and I'd spank them or, like, do weird shit to them. While Shane was growing up, his family was low income and Shane also was very overweight. In 2008, Shane was working at Jenny Craig with his mom and brother. He began posting to his new YouTube channel in March of 2008. One of his very early videos was himself and several other employees in their workplace dancing on a pole. And this video actually ended up causing Shane to be fired along with his mom, brother, and six other employees at Jenny Craig. I can't really say the company I work for because they'll sue me. I mean, they're already trying to sue me, but they'll probably end up suing me again for it. But the company rhymes with Schmenny Schmreg, and it's a weight loss company. After being fired, he began posting more videos and he eventually created his third and most popular channel, Shane. So this first phase is roughly 2008 to 2010. And during that period, he posted skits of himself playing many characters, including one infamous character, Shanene. Shanene was a crude stereotype of a black woman. Over time, his videos gained more and more views and many of these videos were filled with racism, sexism, bestiality, pedophilia, blackface. And I don't mean that Dawson did this once or twice or even three times, or it was once at the very beginning of his channel. This was consistent, consistent racism and blackface. And a lot of people like to say, oh, but it was a different time. And to that, I would just say it was the late, noughties and early 2010s it wasn't actually the 1700s and i can tell you firsthand that this was not okay or normal back then at all another really important factor to to talk about when it comes to this disgusting content from dawson is the fact that you know even if people say oh it was 10 it was 11 years ago he's changed he's given some blanket standard apology for everything so just get over it but shane dawson was actually profiting from these videos until his cancellation in 2020. He had these videos live on his channel and he was not only profiting from the videos, but he had even doubled down and had merch that was on the channel for the character Shanene until his cancellation in 2020. I want you to keep that in mind as we go through all of these periods because Shane is constantly called out and still, despite being called out multiple, multiple times over all these years, he still kept those videos up and still kept profiting from them. And yes, he absolutely did still know they were up. As a YouTuber, whether you're big, small, whatever, you are aware as a creator what you've put out, whether you have 10,000 videos or 10. And he even is more aware because people have constantly brought it up he has a team of people working for him also. I know he likes to be, oh, poor me, I'm just, you know, shuck some little guy with this tiny little channel that just got lucky, but 
he's a businessman and he has a huge platform with tons of people working for him and it's not just him sitting there privating his own videos. The real Shane Dawson that's under this character cares about exactly three things, money, power, and fame. And that's why he kept those videos up. He made that decision every single day to leave those videos up and to profit from them. So another really important factor to discuss when talking about Shane Dawson's beginning was the fact that YouTube was in its early days and it was kind of the wild west. There was no filtration system, kids could watch whatever they wanted and many of them found Shane Dawson. Shane had this loyal audience of very young girls, young teens and tweens, and he was interacting with them a lot behind the scenes and a lot of that is is disturbing as hell. Sexy bitches wearing my hot topic shirts. Damn. Oh, if I Justine wasn't watching, I would rock all of you. Oh yeah. I want all those shirts on my bedroom floor instead of on your underage bodies. Oh. Shane also started doing meet and greets and did extremely problematic things at these meet and greets, like kissing a 12 year old girl. Shane was also going on Tiny Chat and Omegle, not live streams, but small chats where you can see who you're talking to. And he was being incredibly inappropriate, asking children to do inappropriate things. <laughs> I love you too. Can you twerk for us? Okay, okay. Twerk for us. <laughs> oh, here we go. Show. She's in front of oh, us. Yeah. 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 Good girl. <laughs> yeah. Now tell her to show herself. Stop it, Shane. <laughs> Shane's videos were filled, and I mean filled with Shane being inappropriate to kids and he did this for years and years and then we'd bake cookies. the fact he did all this is disgusting in itself But the even crazier thing is that he's never apologized, never taken any accountability or try and fix or write any of these terrible things. He just tries to throw one blanket apology over everything, but he hasn't actually apologized for anything or done anything to make amends. And not only was this happening with children, it was also happening with animals. Eat my peanut butter. And like the inappropriate behavior with children, there is just so, 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 so much of this. Just countless videos and clips of him harassing animals. Shane likes to talk about all of these things as if they were done by a different person and he's never done any sort of apology, amends or reparations but he just kind of uses this blanket, absolutely generic apology that's, yeah, yeah, okay, stop bothering me, get over it, it was years ago. And we'll talk much more about that later on in the video. So Dawson was interacting with all these teens and tweens through all the tiny chat and weird meet and greets, all going throughout 2011 to 2013. This is our next time period, and this is when you started to see people like Drew Monson and other people join the channel. One thing to mention here is Shane would generally have a group of people appear in his videos. There's been Shana Malcolm, Drew Monson, Destery Smith. We'll talk more about Smith later. Garrett Watts, Andrew Sawicki, Trisha Paytas, and more. The majority of these people seem like nice, genuine people. And interestingly, out of all these people, none except one seems to be associated with Dawson anymore and that would be Destery Smith and we'll talk again more about him later. Everyone else seems to have had big fallouts with Dawson and if you go back and watch videos of them interacting there are a lot of points where you can see the real Shane seems to be coming through. He's very rude to them. I'm gonna talk about Garrett Gabby Hanna, his ex-producer Lauren, Shana, Jake Paul, and even Jeffree Star, believe it or not. Everyone that I've just mentioned, Shane has either tried to manipulate them, outright insulted them, or just generally be a bad friend to them. Some of the things that Shane has done to them 
have just been in little microwaves that kind of build up and wear on a person over time. And some of the things are in such overt ways that really make me wish that Shane had been cancelled a long time ago. We never see any childhood friends, no pre-YouTube friends, and he has even spoken about the fact that he doesn't have a lot of friends because he used to use different personalities with people. The video of Dawson actually saying that has been deleted though now, but it was a video from 2015. Dawson just seems to use people and when he isn't able to use them anymore or he finds someone else he can use more effectively, he dumps them. But I got, I started getting voice memos from people over the years of Shane shit talking me, like his actual audio. I didn't put it out there because I thought it was kind of weird, but I oh, recap what he said. And he basically like heard from Shane's, this is the first time I heard it because like Peter Mon said, that he called me a soci oh he called me a sociopath which what like you're right i saw that video not everyone's a sociopath shane just because you had a fake ass therapist on your series that was whatever that got sounds like he's a sociopath if anyone is like for and also he called me a pathological liar and a sociopath with peter mom because peter mom's like oh yeah trish said she wants to hang out and he's like well she's a pathological liar i was like it had nothing to do it's not like i said oh shane's like this and he had also to like himself. nothing prompted him to t talk shit behind you is she he wasn't like can i trust her he, he, she's like oh i'm hanging out with her he's like oh cool i love her she's one of my best friends you'll have a good time it's like no she's a pathological liar that was it's like sorry and i hung out with peter mon after that so clearly i wasn't a pathological liar because i did want to hang out with him it was insane to me like that to me was the scariest thing like you expect it from jeffrey jeffrey once again is going to get off the hook with this because he's a mean girl he's known for that that's his mo i think he kind of likes mm. it shane however is a little two-faced snake rylan is also a little two-faced snake and i don't you know i honestly would rather be best friends with jeffrey than have to see them ever again. well at least you know what to expect with jeffrey that's what I'm saying. Because like you said, he's just he's just a douche. That's just one, his defining characteristic as a human being. I get it. Hey, I mean, I get yeah. that. I respect it more, you know? Mm. I should have known because everyone has these issues with him. I should have known. Shane. But Shane, the, the so-called... Uh, what, what is it? Empath. Always? Yeah, the empath. This fucking cracks me up. No one can call you. can't call yourself an empath. That's like saying I'm a good person. Like you, you just you can't just say that. You're obviously not if you have to say that you are. It's like people call themselves rich. Like if you have well, to call yourself rich, you're not rich. You're, like, you're clearly not an empath. Shane seems incapable of retaining a friend, and I have a lot more to say about the way he treats his alleged friends, especially in regards to Trisha Paytas, Andrew Sawicki, and Garrett Watts and also about Desiree Smith, as I've said before, but I will talk about that later, so put a pin in that. So now we're entering 2013, and over the course of the next two years, a huge part of Dawson's life was the TV show The Chair. I honestly can't believe Dawson didn't lose his career after The Chair aired, because he is full mask off in this show, and we truly see the real Shane Dawson, and he is awful to people. There's many, many times that he is a problem for people. So if we just like lose that, I'm just saying, I'm not taking anything out of the movie to please a bunch of out of work actors in Pittsburgh who should be lucky to get an audition for a feature film. I no director has ever taken anything out of a movie to get somebody to watch Shane. I'm angry that we're finding out about this two days before I we start filming. I I don't know. I'm gonna go. Shane, stop it. You can't go. We have too much to do. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this in my this I'm really annoyed because I feel like I have not come across any less than a collaborative person. If you guys told me, like, right. hey, I think there's a lot of work to it, I'd be like, okay, great, let's do it. You won't read the notes? I want to see all the notes. You said the opposite to me. No. You, you specifically told me that night you guys are gonna send me the notes and I'm never gonna read them. I mean, as a joke. Okay? But it's been a week and you haven't read them either, so but, that's... But I don't know where the they are. Because I knew you guys were gonna come and say, hey, listen, this is the consensus from the car. That's different you, than reading am I, I'm supposed to read every single card? I read every single one. I'm interested to hear, like, the show The Chair was a reality show and Shane and another person, Anna Martimucci, were both chosen to make a video based on the same script and the winner would get a cash prize. They also were both given $850,000 to make their version of the movie. I'm angry, actually. I'm angry. The fact that $850,000 got put into making something that was so egregiously offensive. And not only the material, but actually the fact that $850,000 was put into 
making that. It made me angry. I don't quite know why they thought this would be fair because Anna Martimucci entered as an unknown director and Shane came in and his YouTube channel had millions of subscribers at this stage. Shane Dawson ended up making the movie Not Cool and it is actually the worst movie ever put to film. The other contestant was Anna Martimucci, who was a graduate from NYU Film School. As I said, Shane was actually himself in the chair and the audience got to see what he was really like because he wasn't in control of the narrative like he usually is with his YouTube channel and editing and social media. He wasn't filming the TV show portion, so he didn't have say over the final edit or what they filmed. Start to really see like Shane does not want to appear the way he can tell he's appearing. Your note, they're gonna roll the tape back, it's gonna go back to him saying that the first 25 minutes doesn't work because Tori's not in it and I'm gonna go to me saying, I think that I wanna do it this way. That was the first note you went into, it was the one that you knew they were gonna use. No, I don't, Shane, because I'm not thinking about the TV show. Like, I haven't even thought about that since that day. This TV show was really one of the only times you really got to see the real Shane Dawson until June 27th, 2020, when Shane Dawson tore his mask off completely for the world to see, but we'll talk more about that later. There is actually a point in the chair where Shane is filming at a tattoo studio and the owner of the tattoo studio asks the producers to not put her name in the credit, not put her shop's name in the credit, cover up any emblems or names of her shop so that nobody knows that it's actually her shop because she said she went online last night and watched Shane's content and she just tore it apart. She was saying how awful it is, how he was absolutely racist and sexist and just it was the most terrible content she'd ever seen and she did not want to be associated with it in any way. The tattoo shop owner wanted to murder me for reals, like not with a blood tube, like with actual blood coming out of my body. And she's just like, I watched his videos last night. They're disgusting. They're racist. I hate him. And they're not really receptive. Like, hmm, I wonder what led her to that conclusion that Shane is racist. Maybe I'll look into that. They're like, no, I watched his videos. I don't think he's racist at all. Why did you let us shoot here then? I only watched his videos this morning. I didn't want to fuck up your crew. Yeah, that was very nice of you. It's also not even funny or dumb, y'all, is the thing. It's, it's disgusting. No, 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 I, 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 I get it. I, no, I, like, I don't understand how he can get away with such blatant, horrible, like, racist fuck. So I do like to point to this to show it really wasn't that much of a different time. There was just certain people trying to get away with being racist, like, any other time and this was completely inappropriate then but he still did it the chair showed shane dawson in a very bad light and he even seemed to realize that he was coming off badly luckily for him not that many people saw it but he spent the entire series dragging other people yelling at his friends and producers and one in particular his friend lauren I do not know what she was doing with him because she seems to be a very hardworking, switched on person. I don't really know that much about her, but Shane treated her like absolute garbage. The only redeemable thing about this actual movie was Drew Monson's performance. And then in the show, The Chair, Lauren seemed to do a lot of the work and try to soften the awful sides of Shane. And of course, spoiler alert, Shane ended up winning because he had millions of subscribers and Anna was completely unknown. I really do wish Anna Martimucci would have won because she seemed to actually have talent and people seemed to like working on her movie, but all of Shane's teen and tween fans went to go see the movie even though he is in complete denial of that's why he won. Shane was given the 850000 to make his movie, and then he won 250000 and he already was a millionaire from YouTube. Even though, as I mentioned in the beginning, Shane Dawson seems to like to cosplay as low income because he thinks just because he was low income when he was a child that 
he's forever low income even though he's been rich way longer than he was ever low income so at the end of the show the chair they did share the reviews that were given for shane's movie not cool and they are honestly the worst reviews i've ever seen for anything in my life and the movie was so bad that zachary quinto who was involved with the project and another producer actually took their names off shane's movie because they were so disgusted by it you must be a sociopath that was in the los angeles times this movie got some of the worst reviews i've ever seen in my life <laughs> I have never read reviews that have said the people involved in giving this person an opportunity to make this movie should never be allowed in the film business again. For me, reviews don't really mean whether a movie is good. To have five middle-aged white dudes to judge your movie, especially a teen comedy, not really the tell-all for how the movie is. I love that. Everyone's like, we got destroyed by the reviews. Everyone hated it. And then Shane's like, oh, I don't actually think that that matters at all. It's in your play into my opinion it's like he had to put up such a wall against these things he has an answer for the reason why everything is negatively received here he's saying oh a regular movie gets like 200 critical reviews not cool out only five so if five middle-aged white guys didn't like it whatever those are movie critics so i mean they know what they're talking about also like movie critics they whatever age or race they are they have also reviewed other children's movies as other teen comedies they've seen super bad they're not missing the point they're giving their professional opinion on the story and the execution of your film and both were lacking like it's so bad and i'm sorry i don't blame the reviewer for being like who gave this guy the money to do this because that's all i could think when watching it like knowing how much work goes into a movie and how many awesome stories there are to tell from underrepresented filmmakers out there like they could have given that that eight hundred fifty thousand dollars to a woman of color or to uh, any person of color really and have a story told like let me see this story being told through the eyes of a black filmmaker or something not a stupid filmmaker of course shane dawson who has no training or experience in the film industry claims zachary quinto who has been extremely successful not only in different genres of film but also on television shane dawson claims zachary quinto just doesn't get it the producers involved in a docuseries who helped produce both movies, they all agreed that Anna's movie was better. In fact, Zachary Quinno was so horrified by Shane Dawson's movie, he wanted his name taken off the credit. I cannot associate myself in name to that kind of content. I just can't do it. It just clarified for me the kinds of things that I want to be a part of, and that's important for me personally. Zach has decided to take his name off of Shane's film and not participate in the promotion of that. I believe I'm going to do the same thing. So after the chair, Shane Dawson was doing a lot of kids content. He was copying a lot of kids content, even the style of their thumbnails. And if we fast forward a few years, we're still in 2017 now. Shane has Garrett Watts join the channel and Garrett actually started out as his Tinder date. They only went on two dates and it didn't work out. And then Shane, Garrett and Drew became kind of a trio and they began shooting videos together and doing Spooky Boys. So they did that for a while. It was popular, of course. Then Shane and Drew had kind of a falling out. No one really knows what happened, but of course, Shane blames Drew. Drew left the group and then Shane decides to introduce his new boyfriend, Ryland. After introducing Ryland, that is when he started doing his conspiracy videos. So these videos were gonna be a lot of work and that's when Garrett introduced Dawson to his friend and Andrew and Andrew started out as Shane's camera guy and then in 2018 they revealed who Andrew was and people seem to really enjoy Garrett and Andrew being on the channel. As we saw earlier Shane Dawson is awful to work with and extremely self-centered despite constantly trying to tell people what a wonderful caring empath he is. So I'm sure Garrett and Andrew were really going through it. Shane then started doing his documentary style videos which honestly talk about drawing them out to squeeze every last dollar despite already being like a multi multi-millionaire that could retire 
but we'll talk about his finances later. In his series about Jake Paul, Dawson hired a family therapist to secretly analyze Paul and didn't tell Paul that that's what he was doing. He told Paul that the therapist was actually his assistant. I don't know a huge amount about Katie Morton, who was the woman that appeared in the mind of Jake Paul, but my understanding is she is a family and marriage therapist so her expertise is not psychopathy and I can tell you that when people now use words like sociopath it's kind of a red flag because it's just not something that that professionals would would reuse they would go more to psychopathy and then also when people use the term subconscious that also is a big red flag to me because in psychiatry psychology whatever way you want to say it nobody would use the word subconscious there actually is no mention of subconscious it's unconscious so that also was was a red flag take what is being said with a huge pinch of salt and also anything Shane Dawson is saying is 99% of the time for money or views so I can't imagine that he was taking this seriously and the way he kind of mouths and implies Garrett knowing that this video would be seen by millions and millions of people is just gross like so gross knowing that he would see it too and also Garrett like has have you seen any of his content Garrett is literally the opposite of that. So throughout these documentaries, you know, there's there was many, many more after Jake Paul, all stretched out to ridiculous time lengths with things like Shane going to the gym. And I don't understand why you wouldn't take this like vlog side and bits about himself and put them onto other videos and make those for like your super fans. But of course, he's just padding out his runtime for even more sponsorships and even more mid rolls. So as these documentaries are going on, you can see how toxic Dawson is becoming. He's so rude to especially Garrett, Andrew, others around him. As I said before, like most of these people seem like like nice people. And you also see at multiple points where Dawson just seems so self-centered and toxic to the point where you have Jake Paul talking about his abusive father and breaking down and crying in front of him and Dawson sitting there waiting basically to talk about himself like he could not be any less interested. So now we're going to enter 2019 and the beauty community. Dawson was going to do a documentary on Jeffree Star and he wanted something in return. He wanted Jeffree Star to make him rich. The thing about Dawson is he's already rich but he wants to be richer no matter what he tells you when he's cosplaying as low income and as I said before even though he's been richer (laughs) far, far longer than he ever was low income. And he's not just doing well. He's a multi, multi multi-millionaire living in multiple mansions and being able to afford whatever he wants. This relationship between Shane and Jeffrey seems to be born out of and maintained by using each other. And on both sides, they also are being exposed to their non-traditional audience. So Jeffrey is being exposed to Shane's and Shane is being exposed to Jeffrey's. And then Shane is also being able to enter the beauty community, put out a product and make a lot of money. This is where Shane lets uh, some of that mm, temper come through that I first witnessed in the reality show, The Chair back in 2015, which was the first indication to many that he is not the nice soft boy that he likes to pretend to be. He can boot some people off the site in an attempt to try to gain access to the back end. Who's asking that? Uh, Shopify. Fix it. Cool. So public perception at this time was quite high for Shane of the people who watched his stuff. But then mid project, Shane gets held accountable for his past actions. And he actually then begins to document that in the projects. This isn't his main major cancellation that was June 2020. This is kind of a preview of that. And you think the fact that he's saying every year this happens and people call him out about these things, you think that would mean he would take down all of this content. But again, 
He didn't because it was making him money and he didn't take the majority of this stuff down until June 2020. Not all of it was up. Some of the stuff like the podcast was lost to time and clips that other people posted were were there. But a lot of his stuff, especially the Shanene character, that was still up in the merch store, not even just clips of it. And that was all making him money until June 2020. For the first 10 minutes, they're really just kind of processing this scandal on Shane end and in a way kind of normalizing the fact that he always has scandals the shane is over party that would never happen oh it's annual it's every year it's, <laughs> it literally is imagine flashing headlines about your child's sex abuse allegations on screen while laughing and dismissively saying oh, it's annual like that kind of editing would be too obvious in a video that's trying to make him look bad sometimes i get the feeling that shane and andrew are just hyping each other up while they edit these videos yeah add another one of those sounds Oh yeah. Put a screenshot from Twitter in with the background of the Twitter logo, Profesh. And then Shane just uploads it without getting anyone's outside feedback to be like, mm, maybe you don't need to include those headlines while you're talking about this because it kind of gives the wrong message. Because to me, it's just showing that you're a person who's well-documented making awful jokes. So in his apology, he basically says, now that I'm making stuff I love, I'm being myself, it feels so much better. I'm sorry for what I said about anything or anyone that was offensive. Without my past, I wouldn't be who I am. This has been the best two years of my life. It's because I've been able to drop the act and be myself. Sorry for not doing this here. So that apology was all about basically just like a blanket apology for all of his offensive jokes, including the cat thing. But what I noticed is like a lack of ways mentioned that he plans to make it right. You know, like how are you making it right besides just being your true authentic self now? Because that's actually not the same as apologizing or making right on all of those people or groups that you harmed, right? Like there was no like, I'm starting starting conversations with these groups of people that I offended. I'm having a discussion over here about blah, 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 about being responsible towards the young audience, about having a young audience and handling it safely. Like I'm educating myself, not basically like just drop it because I've apologized so many times and I'm not doing it anymore. So Shane starts his documentary series about Jeffree Star that could have been two interesting episodes, but instead they are seven bloated parts that are just money hungry messes. At the time, I really did try and watch one of these episodes, but I couldn't even make it through five minutes. So many people were hyping it up that I was like, oh, it must be, it must be good if all these people are saying this. And yeah, I couldn't get through the first few minutes. It, it, it was unbelievably poor content but also the way it was structurally thought out, it was obvious he was just filming per episode and throwing things up per episode. There was no overarching story or even a storyline within the actual episode you were watching. If you want to watch them and understand all of that and why they are so bad, please go and watch Nick DeRamio. He is an amazing YouTuber and he went through every episode of the series and he's gone through pretty much all of Dawson's content. I absolutely love Nick. He's hilarious and he definitely doesn't need me, a tiny YouTuber, shouting him out. This is more for your benefit if you haven't heard of him, but he is brilliant and he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to breaking down film and also Shane Dawson. I'm two, two the same. <laughs> Guess we'll do a giveaway. And I'll do a getaway because every time I, you pull that clown face, I start running. Imagine thinking you could just say something funny and then making a face and being like, and that's the comedy. That's the closest to comedy that I'm willing to go. Oh, I'm drinking a little mug. Ooh, it smells so muggy. That didn't make me laugh. That didn't make you laugh. Anyone I mention in this video or use a snip of their video, their stuff will be linked in the description box. So there's plenty of great content to check out. Shane was also using this docuseries as a marketing tool to launch the conspiracy palette, conspiracy collection. So that was actually clever. Like that was really clever marketing, but the execution was just horrendous. They did not need to be so many episodes. I mean, a normal documentary on actually like complicated subjects they're between like two two and a half hours so think of like blackfish and things like that and even when you think about 
Netflix and one of the documentaries that they do, Take Bad Vegan, for example, that was a super complicated story told over a really long time with many people and they did four episodes. Dawson did multiple, multiple, multiple parts. Some of these have like six, seven, eight parts and they're hours and hours long. It's it's just pure greed, again, driving this and not actual substance because the stuff he adds in like about the beauty community when he goes to the gym and he's drinking root beer and he just shows absolutely nothing. Only his super fans would be interested in this. So why don't you do a super fan cut or put it in a separate vlog channel? Of course, he wouldn't do that because one, it's more work. And also because the big sponsorships like Honey and all of these, they wouldn't give as much or as frequent sponsorships. So it's better for him just to put it on YouTube as many hours as possible, as many mid rolls as possible. And he's kind of getting paid twice with the sponsorship and all the mid rolls. So Dawson was riding high after the documentaries came out, after the palette came out. I don't follow Dawson or Star at all. And even I heard about this palette and how it was breaking websites and all of this stuff. But this was when Dawson was probably at his best. Like he was pulling in over 40 million views a video. He had about 21 million subscribers. It's dropped a bit since then. And he just couldn't pump out things fast enough. Like people really thought he was just like the greatest at this stage. And obviously I don't know how much money they made from the makeup line, but it had to be insane. Now we're going to talk about Dramageddon 2 and Shane Dawson's cancellation. First, we need a little bit of backstory. If you want to know more about all of this, there are literally thousands of videos about all of this on the internet. So I'm just going to give a very brief overview. Basically, in between Shane Dawson's original Jeffree Star series, The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star, and the second series where the palettes and everything were tied into, there was an event known online as Dramageddon 2.0. This was basically a feud between James Charles, the influencer, his beauty YouTube mentor, Taddy Westbrook, and Jeffree Star. In the beginning, when Westbrook uploaded her explosive Bi Sisters video, that's where she alleged that James Charles had questionable interactions with straight men. Jeffree Star followed the video with his own accusations against Charles, elevating all this drama into serious claims and saying that James Charles was a danger to society. In his response video, No More Lies, James Charles denied Star's allegations and revealed lots of private messages that Star had sent him and other stuff that kind of put James Charles back on everyone's side. Star never produced any evidence to substantiate his claims and later said he didn't know if they were true. Dawson at this time was publicly uninvolved in the feud but came out in support of Westbrook and later it was speculated that Dawson had a behind the scenes role in the feud. So this would percolate over time and Shane Dawson also kind of used Dramageddon 2 clips in his trailer for his second series and hyping it up but then he didn't include any of these teased scenes and he didn't provide any new details about Dramageddon 2 so this disappointed a lot of people. Dawson apologized for teasing the drama in the trailer and he said putting drama in the trailer was something I regret more than anything in the world and I'm mad that I chose T over my morals. I'm really sorry to Taddy and James if me putting their drama in the series at all felt I was reopening wounds. Although I did speak to both of them privately about the trailer, I should not have even done it at all. Close quote. One of James Charles' close friends at the time, Cassie, responded to Dawson's apology and said, quote, James kindly asked you not to post that trailer because it would reopen wounds that he was still trying to heal from. Close quote. Now this is kind Kind of the beginning of Dawson's cancellations. There was lots of going back and forth on podcasts and receipts and tea and in June 2020 exposés about Star and Dawson started gaining traction on YouTube. Multiple drama channels were posting about Jeffree Star and these videos began to gain traction popularizing the belief that Star and Dawson may have had 
more involvement in Dramageddon 2 than originally thought. More videos, more videos, more podcasts, more episodes of Mom's Basement were putting Dawson in a worse and worse light and under pressure from all of these channels and videos and frustrated fans, Shane Dawson posted a very poorly received note on Twitter, that's kind of an understatement, announcing he would leave the beauty community that he had been in for three seconds. Quote, welcome to the circus. My final thoughts on the beauty world. A few questions that I've been getting lately. Did I know that she was thinking about making a video? Yes. Did I tell her to make it? No. Did I have any involvement in the video? No. Did I orchestrate it? No. Did I need that kind of drama to make a good series? No. Eh. Have I ever tried to ruin a career and make someone look bad in my 15 years on YouTube? No. Eh. Do I have a track record of getting into drama with people or having fights with other YouTubers? Eh. Am I innocent and do I have huge anxiety provoking regrets? Oh, poor, poor you. And it's all stuff about the continue. I'll put it on the screen if you really want to read the rest. The conspiracy palette was one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah, because you got super rich, dude. <laughs> So saying this was poorly received is just like the understatement of the year and all of these people who had welcomed Shane Dawson in and also given him a huge amount of money with the palette and letting him come into the beauty community and he was, you know, obviously pretending that he was interested in it. He was just interested in the money. So rightfully so all these people were like this is super rude and over the next week people began dredging up receipts of bad behavior by Dawson including the plethora of racist remarks and inappropriate comments about children animals and just everything and anything in between that's also when other youtubers and people behind the scenes started saying what the real Shane Dawson is like and not this character and mask that he plays on his channel. This culminated in several viral Twitter threads and a lot of drama YouTube videos about everything from old racist remarks, Dawson using the n-word on camera many times, to questionable remarks that Dawson has made about young children and pedos. This included comments made to young fans on video chats like Omegle and Tiny Chat, like we mentioned in the beginning of the video, but Dawson also used his podcast as a platform to call young female in Instagram users sexy which saying young female like that makes it sound like it's like a 16 17 year old Dawson in one of these clips was talking about a literal six-year-old and by the way like I said he constantly gets in trouble for these things he had started catching flack a couple years ago when statements he made in a podcast were resurfacing making the rounds again about looking up child porn and calling a child sexy and Shane Dawson's claim was that this was edited out of context to make him sound bad. The podcast, I mean, there's so many clips that people are bringing up. So there's a clip that has been going around again. A few years ago is when it came out. And they cut out all the parts where I said, you know, pedophilia is disgusting. And they put it together and it made it seem like I was, you know, talking about how it's normal. So gross. I would never say that. So I am going to play this clip in its entirety. It's, it's a little long. But because he claims that it was edited to make him look bad, I literally have to play this full thing so that you can understand that he was lying. This is what he said. What is Kim Kardashian? Is she half black? No, she's Armenian. No. Is she yeah. where Rebecca Black is? They look similar. Oh, uh, no. I, I don't think we were asking Rebecca, Rebecca Black, black has made a l little less of a sex tape. <laughs> she hasn't had sex with as many black guys. She did probably with that guy in that she's band. She's 15. Stop it. She's growing up. She's, she's almost 16. Not. She she's... told us, when I asked her, I said, how old are you? She said 15. I said, that's so young. She's like, I'm almost 16. <laughs> As if when she turned 16, we could talk about dicks to her. Yeah. Not, probably not. No. Um, well, I have an UGG. Oh, okay. Excuse now, me. this is an UGG that I just realized uh, a few days ago. I was with Lisa, and we ran into a child. I'm not going to say why or how, but we ran into <laughs> like, a child. Like, in your, wait, hold on. In your with car, my car, I hit like, the child. Hit the child. Okay. It was dying on the side of the road. Okay, and I great. said, oh, I should probably ask what its name is. Uh -huh. No, but this child was probably six years old, and um, I was taking a picture of something, and the kid turns to me and goes, oh, are you Instagramming? And first of all, how does a five-year-old, six-year-old know what Instagram is? Right. Which is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I was embarrassed because, yes, I was. And it was a picture of my salad. <laughs> so then, oh, the soup plantation salad. I saw it. It looked amazing. And the six-year-old girl goes, um, oh, how many followers do you have? I mean, Stop. first of all, it was almost like one of those contests where it's like, how big is your dick? <laughs> and this kid slapped his huge, her huge dick on the table and was like a six-year-old who goes, oh, I have 125,000. No. Her dick was... 
almost as big as mine. Really? And I said, okay, little big dick, why do you have so many followers? And she goes, oh, I'm a cheerleader. And I'm like, oh, really? And she shows me her Instagrams, which are like, first of all, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but like, she's like sexy. You're disgusting. Just, I know. Listen, we've talked about pedophilia before. No, no, this before. is the, Shane. Like, <laughs> like, do not say this, and do, like, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, you will get arrested. Like, okay. he kind of can. He, listen, he allegedly, has this justification, justification for pedophilia, okay. and it's so disturbing. And like, I, I just pretend that he doesn't. <laughs> okay, wait, no, like, no. Let me explain. Let no. me explain. Oh God. Here's my justification for pedophilia. I can't. Okay. First of all, let me just say. Having sex with children or touching children or anything of that nature is terrible. Sure. And you should not do it. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> but. Here's my thing. People have foot fetishes. People have fetishes about, you know, everything. And there's websites on the internet where they can look at that weird, creepy shit and jerk off to it. Okay, fine. Everybody do your thing. So why is it when somebody looks at a Google's like naked baby on Google and jerks off to it, they can get arrested? Because, I don't understand that. Because there's a naked baby because they had to because somebody took a picture of a naked baby but and I they mean, don't and then by the way they're not googling naked baby they're googling like i'm not gonna say what they're googling i mean i watch a lot of law and order but here's so the like, worst part of it i actually went to google and i'm like oh god i want to see you can get I don't arrested wanna, i know but i didn't want to see child porn but i just wanted to see like okay let me just pretend yeah. let me pretend like i'm a pedophile for a sec okay by the way just for the record the <laughs> police i have nothing to do with this i didn't know this like you can literally get arrested for saying i know this. Let, let me let me finish sure. so i typed finish. in naked baby first of all i don't understand why anybody would be turned on by that okay. but that's the first good thing you said but they were sexy. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, back to the Instagram. Um, so I look at this little girl's pictures, and she had makeup on. She had her tongue out. She was doing, like, the peace sign. She was doing a backflip. And one of them, she, she was in the shape of a pretzel, and she put hashtag no filters, hashtag pretzel. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm not making this up. Why are children... Was she really six or was she, like, nine? She was six. She must have been, like, ten. No, I asked her. Her bio on Instagram is, yeah. I'm six, bitch. Stop it. No, so why? Oh, first of all, is she like Honey Boo Boo? Is she fat? No, she was like the skinny little sexy six year old. <laughs> all right, can we please move on? No, the, so that's my ugh. Why? Why what? are children having Instagrams, and why do they almost have as many followers as I do? That's your ugh, minus. <laughs> okay, fine, move on. But I'm seriously. I'm, I don't I'm, know. I don't have any. I'm ugging out about it's, it's, it. It's it's uh, it's disturbing. I'm so mad. By the I, way, they're all your followers, probably. Like they're all. That's who's following you. Who, six-year-olds? Uh -huh. No. Maybe. Oh, my God. Hashtag. Yum. I have never heard an adult man call a six-year-old sexy before in my entire life. Like a skinny, sexy little six-year-old. If I personally knew somebody who talked about children that way, I would not interact with them. I would not. Quite simply. I would never let somebody like that around my children. Never. He's also compared things like liking children to having a foot fetish and everything just kept coming out. All videos, captioned photos of Dawson with children that depicted children in disgusting ways, talking to children about sex and imitating predatory behavior in a mocking way. And it just kept coming. This kind of all culminated at an absolute peak whenever someone posted the clip of Shane Dawson doing something disgusting to a Willow Smith poster and the Smith family saw it, you know, the super famous Smith family. Now, what did I tell you? When he says, can I put it in, you say, no. Good. <laughs> High five, girlfriend. In addition to this, his audience would discover a clip of Shane acting inappropriately towards Willow Smith, who was the daughter of Will Smith. The Smith family, who these days are considered the biggest joke in Hollywood, would snap back against Shane Dawson with Jaden tweeting, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. This man was also doing blackface on the regular. As the youth, we need to support creators who support us and our morals. This is not okay. Whilst Willow Smith's mother, Jada Pinkett Smith, would tweet to Shane Dawson, I'm done with the excuses. They put out a tweet on social media and over this time, Dawson then tried to private and hide his videos because people were finding more and more stuff. And there's probably stuff that, that he did hide that we haven't seen. And this stuff that I'm showing you in this video is only what we know. So he privated over a billion views, a billion views 
of questionable content that absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, had a plethora of disgusting, disgusting things in it. And he also dropped from 23 million to 22 million. I think he's gone under 20 million now. I think he's at 19 million. And after this absolute flood, tornado, catastrophe of content, Dawson made an apology video that, of course, he copied from Jenna Marbles, the great Jenna Marbles. So this is what he said, quote, blackface was something I did a lot and there's no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse. I made a video six years ago talking about it and I gave it excuses and it was wrong, but I didn't do the work. As a response to the backlash, Shane Dawson would upload the infamous apology video titled Taking Accountability, beginning the video by stating that all of his previous apology videos sucked as they had been created out of fear. Every apology video I've ever made has been uh, from fear. It's, it's me sitting at home thinking the whole world hates me and crying and hyperventilating and then just turning on a webcam and just saying I'm sorry and then hoping people know I'm a good person and then it'll go away. And that is stupid. That is something that a child does. Not something that a 31 year old uh, man does. That's not, that's not good. The problem with this statement was that it suggested that this apology video wasn't being made out of fear when it clearly was. The video did absolutely nothing. He didn't even really try. Like he literally sat down, turned the camera on and just went, oh, I'm sorry, get over it and turn the camera off. He tried to make no reparations. He didn't hold himself accountable for anything. And I will talk more about that and some of the things he even could have tried to do or say when we talk about his return because he has done absolutely nothing but take a holiday, in my opinion. Basically, he was being dropped left, right, and center. People stopped following him, like famous people. He was being called out everywhere. Morphe dropped his and Star's collection. YouTube demonetized all three of his channels and all the absolute drama channels and everyone was finally calling him out for his ridiculous and disgusting behavior. So Shane Dawson posts this video saying he's taking accountability, he's over drama, he doesn't want to be involved and he doesn't want to, you know, just feed all this drama stuff and he doesn't want to talk bad about other people. Literally the next day, the next day, he goes on live stream when Tati had posted her video alleging that Dawson and Starr manipulated her into making the 2019 feud between her and James Charles. This is Shane Dawson. This is Shane Dawson full mask off. This is who he really is. I don't ever want you to feel like I'm forcing you to forgive me. And I promise that whatever I do next will be putting good into the world and it won't be putting hate or drama or anything negative. This woman is a fucking, oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna wait till as many people get in here as possible because I'm losing my mind. Editorial outlets knew that something was coming before I- Because you mess in drama channels, oh my God. Well then why would you make a video on the matter claiming these allegations? Because she is a fucking, I can't, I can't. I don't wanna say mean things about people. You are so manipulative. Think you're fake you're a fake crying you are fake crying you are fake crying oh my god oh my god oh my god i was molested i have been oh my god i texted shane sharing my concerns for james charles that he was out of the country on the high floor of a hotel and i was afraid for talking over the top of Tati and telling her that her abuse doesn't matter because he was abused and honestly i just cannot fathom the type of person who who speaks like this. I can only imagine what we would have actually seen on this Instagram live because Shane Dawson's fiance Rylan tells him to get off so there's only not even a minute and it's even him just in the beginning being like oh I need to get as many people in here as possible I need the most attention on me. To say this was also poorly received at least he he finally showed his real true self. So even after all of this came out, 
there was only really two people that stood by him and that was Ryland, his fiance, and Trisha Paytas. And as I've said in the earlier part of this video, I'm not actually talking about Trisha Paytas as a person. I know she's problematic as hell, but I'm talking about her just as she represents. She was Shane's best friend. She was supposed to marry them. And this is how he treats a person who's supposed to be his best friend. So they actually ended up having a fallout and they are no longer friends. And this was quite significant because at the time, Trisha was on Frenemies and everyone loved Frenemies. Everyone was listening to Frenemies and Trisha was kind of going through a bit of a redemption arc. So when they stopped being friends, Trisha actually found out that Shane had always been trashing her and I think it was obvious he just used Trisha. Again, I'm not saying she's an amazing person. I'm just saying uh, she's a representative of a friend of Shane's and how he treats people. Shane just does not seem to have the capacity to have friends, to have a genuine relationship with someone that's not motivated by money, power, or fame. The only person that seems to still be around Shane Dawson is Ryland, his fiance, and Destry Smith. And Destry Smith is literally a self-admitted predator. I have to say allegedly so that I don't get sued, but he has literally said as much. And he also goes to the Shane Dawson School of Apologies and basically just says, this is my brand. This is who I am. I'm a creep. And Shane Dawson not only platformed Destry in the past and kind of gave him the platform he has now, but he is still platforming Destry Smith to Shane Dawson's very young female audience and we'll talk a little bit more about that again in the end. So Shane Dawson privated his videos, he pretty much disappeared from YouTube but he still continued making money off merchandise and posting random crap on his Instagram stories always got to be making that money. Many people thought maybe he was trying to work on himself, maybe he was really righting his wrongs, maybe he was going to do what Logan Paul did. And Logan not only returned, changed, but he actually tried his best to make up to the people that he hurt. Shane Dawson did exactly none of that. Shane Dawson has always found a way to victimize himself and act as though he's just this poor little soft boy that got lucky on YouTube. And in fact, there is a huge business behind him and everything he does is very carefully curated. But the thing I don't see a lot of people talking about is how little Shane Dawson has done in ways of his apology. His fans will say, oh, it's in the past, get over it. But Shane's still doing these things in recent memory. But more important, until June 2020, he was still making money off all of these videos and still had them up. As a creator, you know what's in your library. Maybe he couldn't remember exactly every video that everything was in, but he knew all of that racist, sexist, weird crap with kids and animals was up and making him money, which is even more considering he whined constantly that every year or two he got cancelled. He was being reminded constantly that that content was there. So Shane Dawson went away for a while and there was even rumors that he was working on a free Britney movie and these other types of documentaries. And I think people, mainly his fans, were trying to justify what he was doing. Like he was taking all this time off because he was working on this honorable project but in reality he did absolutely nothing this is another time i would say go and check out nick's content because he did a video about shane dawson's return and it's it's a masterpiece that video but dawson basically opens the video explaining exactly what he's been doing which i have said was nothing he does the same thing he always does makes it all about himself he talks about mistakes saying sorry and forgiving and again these weren't mistakes these were consistent patterns of problematic behavior that he did over and over and over again and left up because he still wanted to make money off it and unless you're a diehard Shane Dawson fan I just don't know what you could possibly get out of these videos because they're just glorified vlogs that are 
hold out to the longest possible second to pack in as many ads as possible. Also, his clickbait is absolutely through the roof. He is now releasing these vlogs like they are, you know, these huge life-changing events. He really released a video that was super hyped and this huge thing was happening and it was literally Ryland and him redecorating a room. And another scary vlog was they went to a field in the middle of the night. I've not edited these thumbnails or titles. They are actually the real things. So what really made me decide to do this video, I've been thinking about it for a long time, was I recently saw a clip of Shane Dawson on Perez Hilton's podcast. And Perez Hilton is another person who got extremely, extremely wealthy from trashing women and people of color and saying horrible racist things it was these two people being together who have caused so much hurt and pain to other people and they were literally sitting there laughing about how they took these breaks after their cancellations and it was basically a vacation for them. Dawson and Hilton were both quote unquote cancelled, went away, had a great time apparently, came back, gave a half-ass apology and rebranded and alleged their change people but none of that is true. They are the exact same people as they always were. I can't handle somebody doesn't like me because I can't control how they feel about me and that's a really dark thing and especially during the documentaries I was doing you know, okay. trying to show the good in everyone and trying to get all these things that positive, positive, positive. Yeah. Like, what was that? And, and being a, you were being a mediator and trying to like help people and then and, and maybe. But he wasn't helping people. He was helping himself. The Eugenia Cooney series. He made a series when Eugenia Cooney was still in recovery saying she recovered. Who was that series helping? Shane Dawson. When he made it about uh, Taddy Westbrook, James Charles, Jeffrey Star, who'd that help? Him, who did it ruin? Taddy Westbrook and James Charles. Dawson sat on Hilton's podcast and spoke about his cancellation like it literally was a vacation. The way Dawson took time off, most people assumed he was using this time to work on himself and right his wrongs. Most people expected him to use his time wisely and make a return like that of Logan Paul. After the forest incident, Logan Paul took a significant break from social media. He did some serious work on himself and when he returned, he not only did the work, he was a champion for the mental health community and he also put his money where his mouth was, making an enormous donation to mental health charities. Paul took time off that cost him a lot of money. He took accountability, raised other voices, and donated hugely. You couldn't really describe a better apology than Logan Paul's. He took the time off and used it wisely to return a better and more understanding person and also helping the community he hurt. A million dollar donation is pretty insane and he absolutely could have donated 50, 100k but he really wanted to do the right thing. Logan Paul has gone on to great success, especially with his podcast and his boxing career and the WWE. I'm not saying he's this amazing person and does everything right, but I did really appreciate his apology. I'm not really someone who watches content, but I think that was an admirable thing. Of course, I'm no Logan Paul expert, but he seems to be an example of making a mistake by making bad content uploading it and then listening to people apologizing correcting the mistake and going on from that point as a better person so right here was where i was going to do a little conclusion and outro and end the video but while i've been editing this video there has been something that happened in kind of the shane dawson universe and that was this platforming of destery smith so as I said earlier in the video, Destery Smith was someone who worked with Dawson, that he platformed. He basically has his career because of Shane Dawson. And there has been an absolute avalanche of accusations. Like I've never seen so many accusations. Because basically, yeah, Destery was accused of messaging 13 year olds when he was 20 and also messaging pretty much a bunch of other minors some extremely inappropriate things. And as I've said, this isn't just a one-off scenario. This isn't just like an old Twitter account coming out being like, oh, I was groomed by your favorite YouTuber because that does happen every now and again. And usually it does turn out that it is bollocks. But in this situation, um, no, there is 
So many allegations against this guy, signed off by so many people. Basically, there is just a lot. There are videos out there with half a million views, hundreds of thousands of views, basically saying that yes, this guy is absolutely horrific. He was also accused and admitted to some things which, you know, are still bad, technically not illegal, but pretty much summarize somebody's character. Pretty much he uh, cheated on his girlfriend multiple times. With wonderful and Destry's reaction to all of these accusations was a very Shane Dawson reaction in the sense that he was just like, I'm just a joker, this is my brand. And he basically admitted to what he's being accused of doing. So Shane Dawson is now platforming to his enormous audience of young teen and tween girls. He's platforming a child groomer and someone who has done horrible, horrible things to young girls and he just seems to not care at all. You obviously can't know what's in someone's mind or what they're like. So in the past, if it was just the past relationship, I'd say, oh, Shane Dawson did give him his career, but maybe he didn't know. But right now he knows. He knows everything he's done. He knows all of this stuff because if you go to his YouTube community page he's posted a picture with Destry Smith like welcoming him to the channel and the entire the entire comment section is just saying like how this is so bad that he's doing this I mean there's even really really fanatical Shane fans in there saying this is a bad move this is a terrible person you would think that Shane Dawson the only way he would mention Destry Smith would be saying how he regretted platform forming a creep but no he's hired him and Shane Dawson is now doing his podcast with him promoting him on the podcast and again platforming a literal predator so my original conclusion was going to talk about the fact that Shane Dawson has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that he does not care about YouTube. It's not a priority. He doesn't care about his audience and he is just going to continue putting up lazy content in the form of his podcast and his clickbait stuff with Ryland and to squeeze every last dollar he possibly can while trying to push off some of the scrutiny on people like his brother that he has on his podcast because his brother says quite outlandish things so it takes a little bit of the heat off Shane but the original conclusion I don't really feel like it makes sense anymore because it was gonna leave things in a place where I was going to say basically I think that either Shane Dawson needs to do what Logan Paul did and apologize and work on things or he needs to go away, he needs to do some classes, humble himself, get some experience, and then maybe if he came back and didn't talk about the drama and just focused on his work, he could have done either of those things and it probably would have worked out for him. But my opinion has completely changed now because he is literally exposing his audience to someone very dangerous, a predator, alleged predator, just for safety, but he really is exposing his young, young audience to Destry Smith, who has an unbelievable amount of allegations against them. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, Shane Dawson is absolutely aware his comments are filled with people disgusted by him bringing Destry Smith on the channel. And you have to also remember the people commenting on Shane's channel are most likely his fans. And also there's a thousand million videos on YouTube where you can see what Destry Smith is being accused of. And I'm sure Shane Dawson knows way more than we do about what's going on behind the scenes. So my honest conclusion is that this video and the probably hundreds and thousands of videos like it show that Shane Dawson really doesn't care about anyone. He doesn't care about the people he's offended or hurt. He doesn't care about all his racist, sexist behavior. He doesn't care about being an absolute creep to children and animals. And he certainly doesn't care about his former friends or people he's manipulated in the past. And now he's platforming a predator and groomer alleged to his young audience. And 
I think that makes it pretty clear he doesn't care about his fans either because Shane Dawson only cares about money, attention, and of course, himself. 